Persian boys trained for combat, with an emphasis on archery, from ages 5 to 20. Upon reaching 20, they served four mandatory years in the army and could be drafted back into service. If they chose to leave, until the age of 50, the emphasis of Persian military might was on archery, with the bulk of their force being archers and a large part of the rest of the soldiers being dedicated to protecting the archers with large shields. Even the actual infantry carried bows into battle and would rely primarily on those until the fighting went to hand-to-hand. -to -hand. Cavalry was initially not a big part of the Persian military, as horses were not a big part of Persian society due to their long robes not suitable for the back of a horse. This changed when the Emperor Cyrus realized that relying solely on auxiliary cavalry was not a good idea and that being able to swiftly move your own troops over vast amounts of land and in many types of terrain was actually a good idea. Upon this realization, Cyrus would go on to build the largest mounted army the world had ever seen, initially starting by recruiting from the ranks of the Persian nobles and riders from conquered peoples. This new force was mostly made up of non-Persian light cavalry troops. While the elite or heavy cavalry was in smaller number and only made up of Persians, the Persian army also had many elite units amongst its ranks, most notably the Immortals. The Immortals were a highly exclusive and elite infantry unit made up of exactly 10,000 high-ranking Persian men at all times. Another elite group was a heavy cavalry unit of about 15,000 men born from the highest tiers of Persian society. One of the things that made this unit so fearsome was the invention and use of the javelin. Later adopted to great effect by Alexander the Great in the Roman armies. Over time, Persia began to rely more and more on mercenary troops rather than their own men in the auxiliary troops they had conquered. As it usually goes when an empire begins relying on mercenaries, their military might wane and so to do their regional dominance. Cyrus the Great led the Persians in their first major victory which came against the Lydians, who were affiliated with the Babylonians and Egyptians. This caught the attention of Babylon who Cyrus defeated in 539 B.C. Following their triumph against Babylon they set out to fight against Egypt in the eastern Nile. Delta. Cyrus was dead before they arrived to Egypt though and his son Cambyses was in command of the army. After a ten-day siege on Memphis the Egyptian capital fell. The Persian Empire also went on to take the northwestern region of India. The fact that they were able to take these major western powers down truly spoke to the strength of the Persian military. At their peak, the Persian Empire covered an estimated 5.5 million square kilometers, or 3.4 million miles. They certainly cemented themselves as an empire to be feared for more than a century. Persia ruled gracefully over its people for hundreds of years because the culture and way of life was not forceful or pushed upon Themisir over many years Persia conquered and demolished civilizations and cities. This lead to the control over the population of those areas. A vast population of the Persian-ruled people were a collective of neighboring civilizations such as ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamia. This is why the culture was very diverse. The conquered population of whomever opposed Persia was able to freely live among society if taxes were paid. All is good and all is running smoothly until Persia pulls a switch up and started to force their own ways of life upon their entire population. The Persian people started to rebel and this played a significant role in the demise of the Persian Empire. Secondly, the Persians were at a standstill with technology and advancements. Their armory and weaponry was not progressing leaving them on a steady line of non-progression. This is another major reason that